Hello everyone and welcome to Managerial Accounting. In today's video we're going to go over chapter 24, which is about evaluating decentralized operations. I think this, this chapter is very easy. There's a lot of conceptual parts, but other than that I think it's, it's very easy to follow and very logical and, and many of us can relate to. So before we talk about decentralized operations, let's contrast or compare centralized and decentralized operations. So, what is a centralized company? In a centralized company, all major planning and operating decisions are made by top management. On the other end, in a decentralized company, managers of a separate division or units are delegated operating responsibilities. So, the proper amount of decentralization for a company depends on the company's unique circumstances. Of course, like a good balance is always a good thing. If, if a company is totally centralized, I think this is not very practical. And a company that's totally decentralized, I think that's also dangerous. So managers of decentralized operations often work closely with customers. And that's one of those things that you can notice in decentralized companies. So the division or the unit managers are responsible for planning and controlling the operating or the operations of their divisions. So divisions are often structured around products, customers, or regions. So if we want to see the advantages and disadvantages of decentralized operations, you can see that mainly there are many advantages, but there are a couple of disadvantages that we have to keep in mind. So in terms of advantages uh, or the pros, can think that allow, this allows managers um, to, be to be closest to the operations to, to make decisions. It also provides excellent training for managers. It allows managers to become experts in their area of operations because they deal directly with the product or the customers. It helps retain managers and also improves creativity and customer relations. On the other end, the disadvantage of decentralization is that decisions made by managers may negatively affect the profit of the company because they don't see the whole picture. They only focus on their own product or their group of customers. Uh, the same thing, uh, it also creates an opportunity for duplication of asset, uh, assets and expenses because each manager is only focusing on uh, their resources, their expenses, and, and they don't see other, other divisions. So um, that's one of the other disadvantages of decentralization. So if we talk about decentralization, we have to think about something called responsibility accounting. And here's where accounting would be very helpful in um, creating this kind of responsibility for, for each center, or cost center, or profit center, or investment center. So, in a decentralized business, accounting assists managers in evaluating and controlling the areas of responsibilities, which we call it responsibility centers. So, responsibility accounting is the process of measuring and reporting operating data by responsibility centers. And as I mentioned, there are three types of responsibility centers. On the lower level, we have the cost centers, which have only responsibility over costs. Then we have the profit centers, which have responsibilities over revenues and costs. And then the broadest kind of center or responsibility center is the investment center because it has responsibility over revenues, costs, and investment in assets as well. So we just got some quick idea about uh, centralized and decentralized companies and their advantages and disadvantages. And we got a quick idea about responsibility accounting. So let's try to check our knowledge quickly. So which of the following is considered to be a disadvantage of decentralization? It helps retain managers. Actually, that's an advantage. Provides excellent training for managers. That's another advantage. Duplicates assets and expenses. Yes, I recall I already talked about that. So that's one of the cons or disadvantages of um, decentralization. And just to make sure that we are right, allows managers to become experts in their area of operations. Again, that's an advantage. So the only correct answer here would be C. That's the only disadvantage of this decentralization. So disadvantages of decentralization include decisions made by managers may negatively affect the profits of the company as a whole. And it also duplicates assets and expenses. 
So now let's start talking about cost centers as the first level for responsibility accounting. So a cost center manager has responsibility for controlling costs. They only focus on the cost. They don't care too much about revenues. They don't care about investment in assets. All they care about is cost. So cost centers may vary in size from a small department to an entire, to an entire manufacturing plant and cost centers may exist within other cost centers. So responsibility accounting for cost centers focuses on, on the controlling and reporting of costs. Budget performance reports that report budgeted and actual costs are normally prepared for each cost center. So we'll see in exhibit three, uh, the budget performance reports for three cost centers. We have the vice president for production, we have the manager for plant A, and we have a supervisor for Department 1 of Plant A. But before we go to Exhibit 3, let's see Exhibit 2, which shows us the cost centers in a university, for example. So we have the university, and let's see here, for simplicity reason, we have a university that has only three colleges. We have the College of Engineering, the College of Business, and the College of Arts and Science. If we focus only on the College of Business, we see that, uh, again, for simplicity, I assume we only have three departments. We have the Marketing Department, we have the Accounting Department, and we have the Management Department, so only three departments within the college. And then and each one of these can be considered to be a cost center. And then within, I mean, the college itself could be a, a cost center, and each one of these could be a cost center. So here you see that the accounting department has its own cost center. So the university can, can, ha can have a cost center, the college can have a, a cost center, and within the college we have the accounting department that has its own cost center. So go back, we'll go to exhibit three here which, where we see the responsibility accounting reports for cost centers, and we have here the uh, vice president for production, and here, here we have the responsible for plant A and plant B, and they're also administration side and then within plant A we have um, they have um, the department one, department two and department three and here you see the three departments plus their administration and then within department one we have also the supervisors so we have the supervisor for department one uh, and this is their uh, cost report here or budget performance report where you see their actual and budget and and over and under budgets. So, if we talk about profit centers, then we take it to a higher level. It's not just the cost, it's revenues versus costs. So a profit center manager has the responsibility and authority for making decisions that affect, or that affect revenues and costs, and thereby, thereby profits. So the profit center may be divisions, departments, or products. So remember, a profit is the difference between revenue and cost. And that's why we, when we are talking about the profit center manager, they have to take into consideration both ends, the, the, the revenues and the cost so they can maximize the profit. And we can think about the profit center on the division level, on the department level, on the product level. So responsibility accounting for profit centers focuses on reporting revenues, expenses, and operating income. Therefore, responsibility accounting reports for profit centers take the form of income statements. The profit center income statement should include only revenues and expenses that are controlled by that manager, by that profit center manager. So controllable revenues are revenues earned by the profit center, and controllable expenses are costs that can be influenced or controlled by the decisions of the profit center managers. So there are also support department allocations, and we have to consider that and keep that in mind because it's not always direct expenses. There are also some support department um, expenses that we have to keep in mind. So the controllable expenses of profit centers include direct operating expenses. However, profit centers incur expenses provided by internal centralized support departments. So see here that we started talking about centralized support departments, which are departments that would support many different centers or profit centers, not just one profit center. We have here some examples 
examples of support departments, uh, which include things like research and development, uh, which provide like new ideas and, and yeah, for for product improvements or maybe for uh, coming up with new products. Um, the legal center again for any issues, legal issues, telecommunications, information, computer systems, facilities, purchasing, advertising. And again, advertising is a good example where it affects several profit centers. Uh, same thing for purchasing. All these profit centers, they need to make purchasing. And, and there could be uh, purchasing departments that, that can help these profit centers um, do the best purchasing decision. Payroll accounting, transportation, and human resources. So let's see here a support department allocation example. So before we go into the example, we need to remember that support department allocations are indirect expenses to a profit center. They're not direct expenses. These are not the costs that the profit center manager can control. These are just allocations to each profit center. So a profit center manager has control over support department expenses if the manager is free to choose how much service is used, which is, again, depends on the situation. So in such cases, support department locations are assigned to profit centers based on the usage of the service by each profit center. So let's see this example. We have this company called Nova Entertainment Group, uh, which is a diversified entertainment company, has the following two operating divisions organized as profit centers. They have the theme park division and they have the movie production division. They have revenues and operating expenses, which are under the control of each of these profit centers. So the revenues and direct operating expenses for the two divisions are as follows. And the operating expenses consist of direct expenses, such as the wages and salaries of the division's employees. So for theme park division, we have the revenues about $6 million, And the operating expenses, it's $2,495,000. For the movie production division, the revenues are $2.5 million. And the operating expenses is about $405,000. So, if NEG's support department and the expenses they incur for the year ended December 31st, year 8, are as follows. They have three areas or three uh, supporting departments. They have the purchasing, they have payroll, and they have legal. 400, 255, and 250 for a total of 905. Keep in mind, these supporting or support departments, they serve these two uh, profit centers. They serve the theme, division, the theme park division and the movie production division. So the cost driver for each support department is a measure of the service performed. So for purchasing, the number of purchase, purchase requisitions. For the payroll accounting, the number of payroll checks. And for legal, the number of build hours for like their legal department. So let's say that for the two profit centers, the theme park and the movie production divisions, uh, they had 25, like for, for, the, for the theme park, they made 25,000 purchasing or purchase requisitions versus movie production was only 15,000 purchase requisition for a total of 40,000. For the payroll accounting, uh, we have for the theme park 12,000 payroll checks, while for the movie production it's only 3,000 for a total of 15,000. And for the legal uh, supporting department, we have a lower number of build hours for the theme park, 100. And for the movie production, it seems like it had, they have more issues. So it was 900, 900 build hours for a total of 1,000 build hours. So the first thing we need to do is to calculate the supporting department allocation rate. And how we do that, we get the support, support department expense, which we got here, the 400,000, the 255, and the 250, but we're going to treat each one separately. And then we divide it by the total support department usage. So for each um, uh, supporting department, we just get the total usage here, which is the 40,000, 15,000, and 1,000. So the purchasing allocation rate would be 400,000 divided by 40,000 purchase requisitions. That's $10 per purchase requisition. For the payroll allocation rate, 255 divided by 15,000, and that's $17 per payroll check. And the legal allocation rate is 250,000 divided by 1,000 build hours, 
and that would be $250 per hour. So the service used by each division are multiplied by the support department allocation rates to determine um, support department allocation for each division. So these rates that we got, we're going to multiply by the usage of each division so we can know how much we should have as a cost or how much the allocation of the service uh, departments would be allocated to the two divisions. So in this exhibition here, um, we are going to do this allocation. So you see the, um, for theme park division, we have purchasing, payroll, and legal. So we got the 25,000 purchase requisition multiplied by $10 per pur purchase requisition for a total of 250. And then we have the 12,000 payroll checks multiplied by 17, and that's 204. And we have the 100 multiplied by 250 per hour, and that's uh, 25,000, which is the number we have here. And the same thing for the movie production division, we just, you're going to use the second line of each note. So just to confirm how we got these numbers, the, the, tw the 25,000, the 12, and the 100, these were given to us here. 25,000, 12,000, and the 100. And then the rates, the 10, 17, and 250, this is what we calculated here. And that's how we got these values. And that would be the allocation of these two supporting uh, centers to the profit centers, which are the theme park divisions and the movie production division. So now we have 479,000 uh, for the theme park and 426,000 for the movie production. So here we have the divisional income statement for both of these divisions, the theme park and the movie production division. You can see here we have the revenues, we have the operating expenses, and that would give us the operating income before support department allocations. Um, so we got the difference here to get the, the operating income. And then we have the support department allocations, which we got from the previous exhibit. And that's 250, 204, 25. We subtract this from the operating income before the allocation and we get the operating income to be three thousand or three million twenty six thousand dollars and we do the same thing for uh, the movie production division so let me stop here in the next video we're going to take it to the next level which is investment centers